hey, I'd love to see your fridge. And I'm like, yay, there's probably rotting things in it. I have these very cool containers that I recently got at Kmart. Well, Nick just goes to Reduce to Clear and gets like treats. <laughs> what was that other thing from Reduce to Clear? I know this comes as a wild surprise for some people, but most vegans are not vegan because they hate the taste of meat. They just don't want to eat animals. Hello, beautiful. Welcome to the video. We are going to be doing a bit of a pantry, fridge, freezer, rough and raw video because I was showing a meal that I made the other day on Instagram and someone was like, hey, I'd love to see your fridge. And I'm like, yay, there's probably rotting things in it. Like not even kidding. In saying that, I do find it helpful when I get inspiration from other people. So maybe you're gonna find a bit of inspiration from the staples that I have. And I'm gonna go into why I have the certain things that I do and how I use them on a week to week basis. And I've intentionally left my fridge and freezer exactly the way it is because I do want this to be very real. So if you were scared by gross things, I cannot guarantee that it will not be slightly disturbing. We shall see. One little question I have, I want to hear it in the comments. If you wear glasses and then you wear contacts and you don't normally do that, which is what I'm doing right now, do you feel somewhat naked? Because I feel really weird without the framing or the covering over my face. Like I always feel slightly weird. If I'm not alone, please put it in the comments. I, I'm just curious at this point. Right, let's do a bit of an overview. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's not super pretty, but there is a lot of vegetables in there. And then over here, we have our beautiful condiment array of which there is mini specimens. First things first, I have these very cool containers that I recently got at Kmart and I know that that is not something that is still available in America. On this New Zealand, we're 20 years behind. I am obsessed with these because they fit very well in the fridge and I'm able to see all my produce and it actually inspires me to not only buy more produce but eat more. And so the first thing that I always have is some kind of greens and you can see in here we're getting low because we go through a lot of lettuce. I eat a lot of salads and we try and add that to most of our meals. And then I also put things like my, oh my gosh, mm, kale. I'm gonna use this tonight because you can see it's getting a little bit wilty. I put my salads in here basically as soon as I get home. That is one, bad boy. Here you go, you can see that I actually have more lettuce. So I'm, I kind of just put what I have in season. The way that I think about the veggies that I buy is what do I like to eat that's easy to prepare? So I always have broccoli. If broccoli is in season, I will have it, you're gonna see. I will always have some kind of greens. At the moment, lettuce in New Zealand is very expensive because we are a seasonal produce country. We don't really have the ability to get a lot of produce when it's winter unless it is imported and there's just some things that aren't good for that. So this was a special purchase because I want to make lettuce cups and burrito cups, which is my favorite thing. If you want to go and have a look at this video next, which has got the recipe for those, go and check that out. Star of the show always is the broccoli. And I want to just give you like a little hack with this. Spoiler alert, actually, like if we're really honest, I don't do grocery shopping. I don't enjoy it. Nick does it really, really well. He either orders food to our house and it is delivered or he goes to the supermarket. And so as soon as I get home, I just get an entire broccoli and I rip it like this into little florets and I put them straight into this container. It's very easy to do. And the reason that I like to do this is that I don't get the little, these little bitty bit things all over me because I just don't like the feeling of those. And then if I want them in smaller pieces when I'm actually cooking, I will just rip them into smaller pieces like this for my broccoli steamer. I try and eat about a pound of veggies a day. So I'm cooking with a ton of veggies, but then I'm also adding them as a side. So I pretty much always have broccoli as a side or cauliflower or whatever's kind of easy to have as a side or in season like tomato and things like that. Um, and then I'm also using a lot of produce for my family. So this amount, is something that we would go through in I want to say a week or even less than that and there's more you'll see and so in here I've got some celery 
and I love this container for celery. I'm not sponsored by this at all. This is like literally just came up, but it does actually keep this really fresh enough. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a bend in them. And I'm gonna use some of this tonight for a soup, which was my favorite chicken, not chicken, which really triggered some people that I called it chicken fake vegan chicken but I just buy what's in season so sometimes this will have carrots sometimes it will have parsnips let's go have a look and see what else is there some ASMR for someone who has no nails okay back into the fridge let's go and order so in the produce drawer again I'm just looking for things that are seasonal I normally have coriander herbs leek right now because it's winter is fairly cheap ish so I have a lot <laughs> When I get avocados, once they get ripe, I put them in the fridge and they actually stay ripe or they don't really ripen much more for a good period of time. Old cabbage there. I don't cook with cabbage. I only use it really for coleslaw. So that's why this one's gone all wilty. And I have a whole poly here, which normally I would do the floret thing. Oh, more greens. Interesting. Carrots. And some mushies. And of course, ginger okay and then so over here i know this is wild but my husband's favorite shop in the world is called reduce to clear and they have like this big box stuff this is all capers fridge lighting is this is good i'm gonna film in the fridge more often the thing about capers is that like you need such a small amount so i don't know how we're gonna get through these honestly but they normally come in such a small container that even if we don't, it still ends up like way cheaper and it just inspires me to make more creamy pastas that have capers in them or just like any kind of pasta that has capers. I don't know what else you use capers for. If you do know, let me know in the comments. So I've also got pickled onions, which I made up yesterday. I'm actually gonna show you my prep stuff now and kind of what I do with it. Um, up here, I always have some kind of yogurt um, I, I pretty much always have something that is ready to be cooked up, or it is cooked up. I'm gonna get this out to show you. And this is vegan cheese. So I put vegan cheese on my kids' sandwiches, so we have that there, and I occasionally use it for things. Tofu that is marinating, there we go. Eggplant pickle, my mum bought that, no idea. And then like some grains back here. So I've got like black rice, I've got polished barley juice which we were drinking when we were sick to try and get liquids in and then put with water a crusty avocado that I'm never going to use this was like a leftover salad that I had yesterday that I just shoved in there I, I couldn't finish my meal so I put it in there um, some kind of tahini dressing that I made mustard in there that I put in my kids lunches because I bake potatoes for them sometimes of course the OG goju jan, beautiful. Hello, hello. Hey, I forgot about this. I need to eat that. Some pre-made soup. You can stay there, mate. This aisle is more like the things that are either like condiments or ready for me to discard. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. This is something I always have, so I'm gonna do my prep. I'm gonna explain my prep. Hummuses, hummus, always. Must have hummus. A poor tiny tomato in there. I don't know why he's not with his mates. Gherkins, jams. That is old Play-Doh that my mum made for my children. These are sunflower seeds that my daughter got from her sunflower that we are never going to use. Coriander, my mum does things like this. She puts them in there, it's lovely. More hummus, of course, because it was on special. This is the chicken free chicken. So if you're triggered by this, this is not the video for you. I know this comes as a wild surprise for some people, but most vegans are not vegan because they hate the taste of meat. They just don't want to eat animals. Crazy, I know. <laughs> okay, so prep systems, non-negotiables for me is I always have toasted sesame seeds. And I've done this. <laughs> Another police. Always police around here. Like if you know, you know, <laughs> every single video. Sesame seeds, I love this for sushi bowls and I put it on salads, I, I put it on soups. Toasted sesame seeds just like take things to that next level and I actually find that it's just little amounts of flavor bursts and texture bursts 
that can turn a boring meal into something that you will keep coming back to. The other thing that I would like to have is something pickled or something that I can add on to salads that are going to really make them pop. This only takes like 20-30 minutes for it to get to this kind of texture or consistency like it doesn't take days and you can put it straight in the fridge which I also like. Tofu if I do cook up co tofu or if I do cut it up I cut up a large amount and then I will either marinate it or just cook it straight in the air fryer so that I can um, just have that ready to go for sushi bowls or to shove into salads. And the thing that I always 100% of the time have is roasted potato, sweet potato veggies. There's not much in here. You can see that there's like half a sweet potato, roasted parsnip, which I absolutely love. I've got some <sighs> cauliflower. And just yeah, all the things. So normally I'd have a whole lot more than that, I just don't right now. This is definitely a non-negotiable for me, so I'm going to put some potatoes on tonight so that I have those ready. <sighs> Alright, so condiments. Let's do this. Always I've got curry paste. I love making curry most weeks. Sugar-free V's that Nick likes to drink helps his like MS symptoms sometimes, like if he's like got brain fog and things. I don't really use this. Butter, chicken paste, obviously that is vegan. Many different types of hot sauce, yeast that my husband sometimes makes bread with. However many types of different mayonnaise. I've got some mayonnaise down there. Mustard, ketchup, this is homemade yogurt. I normally don't make yogurt by the way. I normally buy it, but my mum made that. She was looking out for my kids. Soy milk, oat milk. Always we have soda water, but we just don't have it. But we put like a little bit of this cordial type thing. I just put like a literally like a teaspoon or a splash which helps me drink more water. Always olives, you can see I've got more sesame seeds to like sprinkle on. Like this like little handy dandy sprinkler to make sure that they go on easier. Sundry tomatoes, more condiments, more barbecue sauce, plum sauce, olives, chipotle sauce, maple syrup. And inside the freezer we have, always have frozen fruit ice packs, more fruit, ice cream, more ice cream, veggie, 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 edamame, 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 and peas, it's not edamame. My skills at organization may be questionable to some, but it's a system that works for me. You do you. More veggie frozen rice, frozen rice and beans, leftover curry, and then this is more like our fun section. I've got frozen bananas in there. Always have some kind of quick plant-based freezer meal, just if I really need it and I'm on the go. We do burgers occasionally, so we've got burgers, plant-based meats, sausages, my fingers are so cold now, let me put them on your face. Yay. So non-negotiables in my freezer is always frozen fruit. There's always a ton of frozen veggies. I try to always have frozen bananas so I can make up like a quick nice cream. And then I, like I said, these days I always have some kind of plant-based frozen meal because if I'm in a pinch, I can cook that up in the microwave and I will have that with some broccoli, which I have an abundant amount of. Kids home from school. Hi. Do you have a cheap water for us? Yeah, how cold is that? Very, very but cold. I my hand in the freezer. Alright, let's move on to the fruit array. So you can see here, beautiful. They're in season right now. People are giving away great fruit. Sometimes use them. What we always have tomatoes, bananas. These are getting ready to put in the freezer. Apples. I don't really chomp on apples very much, but we use these for school lunches. We're actually running very low on fruit right now. Normally always have kiwi fruit for snacks and for school lunches. Um, just so you know, I don't really snack on fruit very often unless it's like really, really delicious. Forage like these. Mangoes. Like mango. Yeah, if we have mango. Ha, huh, I wish. Custard apples that I foraged recently, randomly found on our walk. Um, and then if I have avocados and I let them ripen up here as well. I've got a pineapple. So essentially I just, my kind of thing with fruit is I want to buy fruit that is easy to cook. 
not cook easy to cut up and eat because it's unlikely that I'm going to eat it otherwise. So I think things that I can just one cut and eat or grab a bite, which is most fruit to be honest, but like I, I tend to not eat things, a lot of things like pineapple because it's just too hard admin wise. I know it sounds dumb, but I just won't end up eating it. All right, let's do our pantry. Unfiltered as heck. As you can see, millions of soy milk all the time, oat milk. And then up here I have the things that I use for cooking, like an empty glass, maple syrup, golden syrup, kids use that for lunches. I've got soy sauce. I do have a little bit of cooking spray, which I use very, very rarely. Nutritional yeast, always. PB2 powder for smoothies. Never use this, bought it at Reduce to Clear. Don't know what's happening with that. This one, never really used. Don't like it, I probably should get rid of it, honestly. Milo, plant-based Milo was not good. Tahini, use a lot of that for dressings. More soy sauce, balsamic vinegar. Nick uses some in this in olive oil and the bread that he makes. More pickles, vinegars, beetroot powder. This is great that I put in smoothies. It's great for going for like runs and things. Little bit of oil that we get for very, very, very slowly. Tea, of course there's tea. So then we have all of our flavoring stuff, chili. I love this seasoning. I'm obsessed with this from Trader Joe's. And I've got like more like chili type salts, sriracha. This is from Trader Joe's as well, I really like it. Marmite, of course, for, for sandwiches, marmalade, seasoning. Uh, what's this? Barley for soups, almond butter, biscoff, which we don't really use. That was probably a reduced to clear as well. <laughs> Nick is all I am the culprit. Nick, you are all about that reduced to clear life. Um, yeah, I love it. This as well. Nick just goes to reduce to clear and gets like treats. Hubbard arms, these are like. I feel like these are like white people proper arms. <laughs> They're not good. Ginger. Mushrooms. I like my packet section. Pasta. Orzo. I always have orzo for soups. I'm obsessed with orzo. More pasta. More pasta. Salt and sugar. Cashews, which I you can see I use a lot of cashews. I don't know why there's a tiny container of sugar in it, but there is. Peanut butter. Oats, buns, I'm gonna put these buns up here. Something that my mum gave my daughters, probably lollies. Teas, muesli bars for school lunches. We have more things for school lunches. Little bars and stuff like that. Garlic, big garlics, onions. This is a fruit cake that my mum made and then I always have tins of tomatoes. Very rarely a coconut cream. I think Nick bought that and had ideas for it. Uh, pineapple slices, beans, tons of beans over here, black beans, kidney beans, lentils, chickpeas, the baked beans. And then we do have some cereals as well. I have some rice, potatoes. And then these little potatoes came from Nick's mum. She grew them in her garden, so I'm excited for them. And then here we have flour, obviously very boring. My little chiller bag, lean with plants, people what's up, you know all about this. More flowers, rices, noodles, more rice, jasmine rice down there, some spices, and a bread maker. And then way up here is my treat box where if I have treats, I will put them in. Some little biscuits, some chocolate. You're looking at the cheap treat jar. Nick's stuff, he got this from, my sister just got back from Europe. Ginger nuts. The treats. And then other just like baking stuff. So this falls on this is like pre-workout that I use. Sugar, cocoa powder, popcorn, fenugreek, leaves, random cooking stuff, cones. Let's have a little chat about why I have these things in my fridge and then the systems that I'm thinking about in order to stay consistent that have helped me to lose these 40 pounds and now maintain that for coming up five years, which is like absolutely insane. My weight fluctuates about five pounds depending on whether I'm traveling or if my habits start to slip, which is amazing for me because I used to gain 20 pounds after coming off a diet. So this way of eating truly does work. 
If you do not know what to eat for weight loss, if you don't know how to build weight loss meals, then I created a mini course just for you. It's completely free. And in it, you're gonna learn my exact framework for building meals that are gonna help you to get into that weight loss zone, start burning fat, why you self-sabotage, how to get consistent, and it's gonna show you everything that I learned in the beginning of my journey that I wish I had 10 years ago in order to start losing weight. Weight loss is a function of getting into a calorie deficit, which basically just means that you're eating less calories than you burn. So the easiest way to do that is eat a ton of low calorie foods, like vegetables, potatoes, rice, beans, and then eliminate or at least minimize those high calorie foods like cakes, oils, chips. That's gonna mean that your overall calories come down. So my non-negotiables that I have in my fridge in order to do this is I always have a ton of easy to prepare vegetables ready to go. You saw my fridge is absolutely packed with produce. If you have a ton of veggies in your fridge and they are prepped, ready to go, they're front of mind, and there's not really much else to choose from, then you're most likely going to eat them. If they're not there, you cannot eat the veggies. Duh. Secondly is I always try to have some kind of cooked up starch that is ready to go. Things like potatoes, beans, rice, anything that I can throw into a quick meal that with my veggies that is going to be filling and satisfying. If I was really hungry, I have the ability to make a meal in about five minutes. If your rice is ready to go, it's going to be much easier to eat a quick sushi bowl than if you have to wait 30 minutes for rice to cook in a rice cooker and also wash the rice cooker and also rinse the rice and everything that comes with it. It gets too easy to just pick up the phone and order Domino's. Been there, done that. Data is key, I'm absolutely obsessed with figuring out what actually works and we've seen in the hundreds of people that have gone through my program Lean of Plants, the ones who get consistently amazing results and then maintain it always have some kind of veggie or some kind of starch prepped up ready to go. So there's, there's a lot of evidence that this really does work. Number three, always have some kind of fruit that is easy to access, it is front of mind because you put it in a visible place that you actually enjoy. This is the best thing that you can snack on, apart from veggies, but it's just way more appealing to snack on a banana than it is a carrot. Fruit is awesome because it is so fast and it naturally satisfies that sweet tooth that we have. And if you're someone who has treats on your counter and things like cookies, replace that with fruit. And that brings me to the fourth point, clean up your environment to be conducive to the kind of behavior that you wanna have. Because environment is the hidden hand that shapes our behavior, which is a direct quote from James Clear, who is my absolute idol, he wrote the book Atomic Habits. It essentially means that we are molded by the environments that we're in. We have this idea that disciplined people have just inherently more willpower. What studies have found is that they just tend to have more disciplined environments and more disciplined routines and that allows them to follow through on that, what we call disciplined behavior. And so when you think about this, it's all about creating barriers between what you're currently doing in terms of the negative behaviors that you're wanting to avoid and then creating positive environments that are conducive or that push you towards those habits that you're trying to create. Think of this like if you were trying to get sober, the worst place that you could be would be bars and places where people were drinking because it's just too easy to slip into those old behaviors. If you're trying to avoid cookies and chips and ice cream and you feel like a slave to your impulses, put more barriers between yourself and those things. Don't have them in your house if you can at all avoid it. And a lot of times it just comes down to having a hard conversation with the people you live with that really that's not food that you want to have there. If you are the person who buys groceries for your family, if you are the person who cooks for your family, you have the most influence over what comes into your home. It's a different story if you're a student or if you have flatmates. But there's still ways you can shape your environment like putting treats up on a higher shelf in a container where you can't see them, putting your veggies at the front of the fridge in containers where they are really visible, having your fruit super visible, having all these things that you want to eat that is just appealing and it is right there when you go and look in the fridge and you open the door and you're bored. Likewise, the things that you don't want to be having is just not there when you go to do that. When we talk about environment shaping behavior, this is a concept that most people find they have a lot of internal resistance to because they think that they need to overcome it or it's just gonna to create too many waves to actually have those kind of conversations. Let me just say this, if you are relying on willpower and motivation 
to avoid certain behaviors that are currently your default habits and your default patterns then you are destined to fail because it is just the path of least resistance. You need to build that internal integrity and that evidence within yourself that when you say you're not going to do something, you actually follow through on that. And the way that you get to that point and build that evidence is by having a system and an environment and a set of structures that force that to happen as you are building that habit. But anytime I notice my habits start to slip, I will modify my environment so that I cannot do those things. Well, I hope you found that helpful and informative. Let me know in the comments what are your non-negotiables inside of your kitchen. I'd also love to hear which of these four things that you either implement now or are going to start implementing in order to get more consistent with your behavior. If you like videos like this about weight loss and habits, then check that subscribe button. Click that subscribe button. And don't forget that free mini course. All right, that really is it. I will see you next week for another video. Bye.